What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to explain the problem and the main limitation in HTTP2. I made a video guys talking about HTTP2 and HTTP3 and Quake and all that stuff and I explained the main limitation of HTTP2, the problem in TCP to be specific, that led uh, the smart engineering Google and Apple and everywhere to build the HTTP3 and specifically the Quick protocol. Right. I'm not going to discuss the quick protocol in detail, but I am going to discuss the limitation of HTTP2 as it stands today. But in order to do that, we need to explain how TCP works and what is the limitation of TCP, which is called the head of line blocking. So what I have here is a beautiful web server and it's running, let's say, HTTP2. Okay. And I have here a client that's about to make a GET request. It's making a GET request, right? To fetch the index.html, right? What exactly does that mean and translates in the network stack? So how about we do that, right? This GET request, in order to be received by the server, this needs to happen. There is a client and server TCP connection by bidirectional that is established. And we talked about TCP and we talked about HTTP too, guys. I'm going to reference the video here. But here's the, think of this as the pipe of the TCP connection. That GET request will get translated into a bunch of bytes, right? The index, the HTML string, the headers, the cookies, everything will be translated into a stream of bytes. And these stream of bytes in the network stack will be translated roughly to few packets. Let's say for simplicity, one and two and three. And these three packets represent that GET request, that single GET request. And we're about to send this. And what we do is we send the three packets to the server through the TCP stack. And the server responsibility is to tell us, the TCP stack here is to tell us, hey, I received packet number one, acknowledgement right that's the, what's called acknowledgement i received packet number two and i received packet number three and only if it receives all the packets the server can assemble all this stuff back into the actual git request that can be interpreted and understand and goes into the, your express application and you do all this rest request and all that stuff only if these three puppies actually got acknowledged but let's throw in a monkey wrench here so what will happen if let's say i delete this thing and something bad happened here let's say i sent packet number two but packet number two never actually made it got lost in the ocean uh, got struck by lightning anything so technically the server will never acknowledge packet number two but it did acknowledge number one and number three so the tcp stack here on your server the file descriptor and all that jazz cannot receive that git request it cannot assemble and build that request in order to uh complete that that request right so what do we do we, we don't basically send anything. And our client in this case will say, oh, I didn't receive an acknowledgement from the server for packet number two. So let me resend this. And it will wait for a single, certain amount of time, right? And then it will start sending it again until it receives an acknowledgement. Hey, I received number two. And that when the get request will be completed and it will be received and that request will be Processed. So guys, you know that HTTP2 is not, doesn't work like this, right? It is actually more efficient than that. So how exactly it is efficient? HTTP2 uses streams and that means it sends multiple requests in a single stream. So what, how does that look like? So it will send, uh, HTTP2 will send it like that. We'll send get request and we'll send another get request to to get the CSS. This is to get the HTML. This is another request to get the, I don't know, JavaScript and all of that stuff in parallel. And that's the power of 
HDTV2 because it in, encapsulates everything into streams and in uniquely identified streams. So every packet that is sent has some sort of an identifier and the server will receive that and will know, oh, this is request number one, this is request number two, this is request number three. And this is called stream. So let's run this problem with multiplexing, which is what we talked about here. Multiple requests shoved into the same TCP connection, right? Which is something we didn't have back in HTTP 1. HTTP 1 was one request per TCP connection per se, right? At a time, okay? And uh, go check out my HTTP 2 video to understand more details about this, guys. All right, so let's, uh, let's uh, break this down. So I'm gonna use uh, the first color, which is white, to represent the first get request, right? Let's say get for the JavaScript, right? And it's gonna be packet number one, packet number three, two, two and three, okay? And the second request to get the CSS, all right? This will be also packet uh, four and five and six, right? So that's what we're gonna do. And let's, let's just run through the problem. I send packet number one, I send packet number two, I send packet number three, I send packet number four, I send packet number five, and six, right, to all the server. And the server will say, okay, I am the green, the server is the green, let's say, okay. Hey, I received number one, I received number two, and let's say number three was damaged, right? And you received number five, number, four number five and number six successfully right but three was damaged so the server technically the tcp stack in the server does not know that this is a request and that's another request it does not know that it knows that the whole thing is just a bunch of data and guess what it will do it will freaking wait for this stinking packet to be transmitted <laughs> Despite this request being complete, the server is actually waiting for this to be retransmitted. So the server, the, the client will resend this packet in stream one, which is this stream, like stream one, and this is stream two, right? And it's sending this again, and let's say that something happened, bad happened, like congestion control and retransmission happening again, and it, is, it keeps failing. So all of these requests, I say that you have all seven requests in parallel, they are all received technically, right? All the packets received successfully, but this stinking packet is bad. And just, just a problem with this request is causing all the other requests to wait because it cannot technically assemble these requests because it does not know that these are different requests. And that's a problem with the TCP stack. We don't have the idea of streams at that lower level. We know packets only, we know bytes. Right, and that's the problem that Quick came in and solved. Quick introduced the idea of streams in the transmit in the in that layer of uh, of the networking. Right, so now with Quick, you can if there is a stinking problem with this packet, it doesn't care. It will only retransmit this, and these requests will be successful. And that is so powerful, guys, right? That's the idea of Quick. And that's why Quick uses UDP because UDP has no idea of retransmission and, and congestion control, right? So they used a raw protocol at that level and they implemented at the layer four-ish or maybe a, a higher level, right? The idea of the retransmission, right? So that's the power of this, right? So layer four, trans, TCP and UD and Quick technically lives in the same layer, layer four, and uses IP, which is the packet, and it smartly understand the idea of requests, understand our idea of streams, and only three transmit things that you absolutely need. All right, guys, that was quick uh, an, uh, explanation of the problem of HTTP2 and the limitation of HTTP2, the TCP head of line blocking, and how quick actually can solve this problem. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you like it, share it with your friends, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.